start the recording right now. So basically, yeah. I, mean, I think, I don't know if you've seen any of such interviews, but what we really do is kind of uh, understand, uh, this interviews about understanding who you are and ultimately it's about helping others do what you've done, which is ace the GMAT. Right. You improved from what, 540 to 710? Yeah, I know. Five, four, five thirty. Five. I just rechecked. It was five thirty in okay. my first attempt. I had an. I had a second attempt, which was six thirty, okay. and yes, then I got a seven ten. Wow. So so so. Right. And and over how long a span are we talking about? Over a year. Over a year. Over okay. over, over a year and a half. Hmm. Yeah. And, and were you constantly studying during this time, or no, no, no not at all. So uh, when I when I gave it the first time, uh, and this happened, I was I was sort of shocked because I didn't expect that. I my mocks had a six ninety, six eighty. I had a seven hundred also. So uh, I I didn't really expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I and it, you know it, it really takes a lot of a lot of your patience and time when you when you are actually studying. So as soon as I was done, you can't get back to studying, or at least I couldn't have gotten back to studying immediately. So I, I left it for a, for a month and a half. And then I, I, I studied for two, three months and I gave it in October, October 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had a 720, 730 on the mocks and I would, I went into to the paper and I got a 6:30, and I was I was I was dazed again out of my mind. The what's happening? Mm -hmm. And you know when you when you do when that happens the second time, you really begin to doubt your own ability. That's true. Uh, but at the same time, you know you you're fighting with yourself because uh, you know you won't you won't make yourself do something which you can't achieve. So you know I know you can do it, but it's just not happening, and you don't know why. The thing is, you just don't know why. That is, that is why. true. Yeah, you, you don't know why it's not happening. So, uh, yes, and then I thought I'm not going to give it again because I didn't know whether I can give it again. I had pretty much exhausted exhausted a lot of the uh, study resources. I have, uh, I mean, I, I you name it, especially in English. You mm -hmm. just name it and I would have probably done it. I've read Manhattan GMAT a couple of times. I have I've studied, I've joined the Kaplan course. Mm -hmm. uh, which You mean the Chopra's course over here? Yeah, which is particularly of no use at all. So uh, uh, I, I joined I joined the uh, Chopra's course thinking that you know something will happen for the second attempt, mm -hmm. and uh, nothing happened. And then in October I, again, you know, I had a, a six thirty, and I was like, I don't know what to do. I've exhausted resources. Where will I get new resources to, mm -hmm. to study from? And uh, then I let it go. I let it go for quite a lot of months. Actually, I think I let it go till. March, April, April, mm -hmm. end. April. I let it go, and then I thought, okay, uh, uh, I never really want. So I, I, I have, I've, you know, been doing, doing pretty well at work, and uh, I am working al along a lot of people who are who have graduated from the IMs and and the mm -hmm. SPJs and all. They are my counterparts, so I, I didn't really uh, one have the patience. Two, I don't know whether I would have actually sit and got the cat because. It is so uncertain. You might you might be getting a ninety nine and percentile, but that day you just get a ninety seven and you're not there. Actually, even with a ninety nine, you don't know what you would get. Actually. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And the third reason was that uh, when when I was doing so well professionally, and I was I I, I am working uh, uh, you know in in a very good job profile out of an engineering college, mm -hmm. and I am working with I am working with these uh, with the people who have graduated from MBA colleges. I, I, I didn't really think that an Indian college is going to give me that uh, value add. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I thought that so the only way out again was to you know pick up my <laughs> pick up my uh, books again and and I started uh, actually I'll tell you what happened. So I started looking at forums and GMAT club mm -hmm. trying to trying to see whether do people give the GMAT the third time because before before. That I never even came on. I, I really never did too much of GMAT club at least. Mm -hmm. So I was I was because well, you were aware of it, right? I was aware of it that something like this exists, mm -hmm. but I had not. I had an account also, but uh, I, I I really never went and read too much and all. So I started reading when I wanted to find out whether do people give it three times and do colleges accept a score the third time. That's when I that's when I started reading uh, on uh, GMAT club. And then I saw a lot of success stories, and I saw a lot of stories where people are saying people are giving it four times, five times. 
mm-hmm. and as long as you're improving it 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 doesn't really uh, matter and a lot of a lot of the colleges consider your last score so you know that's when i decided that okay let's let's go for it one more time mm-hmm. but uh, i think the essential part over here was to figure out what will i do differently mm-hmm. because uh, i didn't really because i would do well in the mocks uh i was stuck at a 33 34 uh, in my english mm-hmm. uh i w- i i never really crossed that if you if you uh, you know even in the mocks i mm-hmm. could somehow never cross that i could never be there on the time i'm not really a reader so i felt my reading speed was slow uh and uh, somehow you know beyond the point i didn't know how to improve in english and rather what to improve in english mm-hmm. because i had finished all the course course material but, but let's kind of Uh, uh kind of you know uh, go this uh, in in a, in a in a chronological order but i have okay. a curious question overall okay. which is uh, you knew gmat club existed yes you knew the gmat existed right yeah but but for two attempts for a period of about one year actually yeah. longer than a year right we know about yeah. 2013 march to 2014 march right why and you were a techy guy Right, right, right. Uh, okay. So I, I, why, why, why not go to GMAT club then? And, and why, why buy courses just to really say, okay, I'm going to go buy this course. I'm going to try this thing out. So I'll tell you. The first time I gave uh, uh, the this GMAT, I had a lot of friends giving it with me. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I really never planned and structured and all. Everyone was giving it, and I thought, okay, even I'm going to give it. And I just, I sort of. Uh, Asked them what have what have they started using? What are they studying? How to study? And I just did it all by myself. Mm-hmm. I, if I can say, uh, my math, my math is uh, otherwise also good, so I didn't have to put in too much of an effort. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just, I did a little bit of studying, and and I, I bombed the exam. So uh, at a, at a five thirty. So you know that attempt was really not uh, a very serious, which mm-hmm. I I think is. Uh, Uh, which is which i think now is very immature of me to be doing that but anyway mm. uh the second attempt uh, I, i went and joined kaplan right mm. so uh, then you make them your uh, you you know you put your faith into them and then they say that they'll guide you and and mm. i just listen to whatever they said so i but, ha- you, didn't, I, I, but you didn't go to gmat club even then you just said no okay. no so they gave me they gave me couple of links uh, on the gmat club to maybe go solve questions But that was after and, you joined their course. Yes, after I joined, after I joined their course. Mm-hmm. After I never, I never got on to doing the uh, internet research on how to crack GMAT. Never really went. I had an account on GMAT Club, mm-hmm. which obviously I must have gone. But I never really went and read too many forums. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, no excuses, but maybe maybe the work and uh, along with it, I didn't really do that. I didn't really, I I didn't even know that I need needed to do that. I thought. I just probably study from these books and it'll happen. So maybe maybe not too much of a, a serious attempt. So l- let's then, take some context here, Nikhil. Right? Okay. Um, uh, you you said you're an engineer by background. Uh, uh, yeah. Where did you do your engineering from? From Manipal, MIT. Okay, and Manipal does have an entrance exam, right? Uh, yes. So so how did you do in that entrance exam? So I'll tell you, uh, I I myself am dazed at how I cracked the entrance exam. Okay, because I have never really gone and for these coachings, mm-hmm. uh, uh, for those engineering coachings. So if you want me to go a little behind, my parents never wanted. I studied in Hyderabad. My parents are based in Hyderabad, and over there, everyone uh, you know sort of uh, goes into these Narayana Chetanya sort of uh, yep. college. Yeah, where they go and really uh, prepare like for it. You wake up at five in the morning and you go to the yeah, yeah, it's study and it's, it's it's actually obnoxious. Mm-hmm. So uh, so uh, I I too studied from there. I mean, I too did my tenth in Hyderabad and then my parents sent me to Pune and I did my I did my plus two eleventh and twelfth in Pune in a boarding school called Bishops. Uh, and it, it I I did the I I I C S E uh, uh you know Board. course. Yeah, and. Uh, I I got a I got a ninety percent percent in my twelfth with a hundred or hundred in math. I got a sixty three in chemistry. I still ended up getting a ninety. So you can you can imagine the other scores. Uh, so uh, yeah, and then after I got out, uh, everybody was giving these engineering exams, and uh, I also decided to give uh, you know a few of them. And Manipal just clicked for me. Mm-hmm. 
so uh, you know i never i really never got a feeling of uh, uh, you know being in a competitive exam earlier okay okay uh, manipal was uh, manipal happened cuz i i probably a, a month or two i mm -hmm. i i talk spoke to people who are in manipal they gave me some course material my mm -hmm. so, which i which i sort of uh, studied i freshly i mean the icse books are huge themselves mm -hmm. so i knew uh, a bit of a bit of the stuff Mm -hmm. uh, i had a lot of other friends who were really preparing for the exams so i borrowed some material from them so that was a month of month of preparation and i i made it to manipal okay so you were in some way you kind of were under the impression that you are a natural test taker and that's the same thing no 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 okay nothing, nothing, no, no, no nothing like that uh if i can put it in a way i have never uh, you know until the gmat i have i have really never uh, gone and faced too much competition and uh but yeah. you, you, but but you're working side by side with iims right today today yes so that's yeah. after so that's after you i graduated from manipal but uh, uh you know again i i really uh, especially this test taking thing i never knew it can take so much of a toll on you i okay. i i never i never sensed it before i so people uh, you know uh, people used to uh, you people people used to say you you know you're overconfident at times and at least you're always confident i've never you know i never had stage fright i've never had exam fright nothing so never it doesn't never, seem like you have stage fright the way you're talking to be very yeah fast. exactly so, so there are no ums and ahs in your conversation i know when i had to um, so in my college i was uh, I, I i was the the joint secretary of a cultural society and and i had never taken the stage before that probably a couple of times when i was in in dps but not not not, okay. not, not. and i know i had to train in front of the mirror i had to really focus on my ums and ahs and 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 uh, even then it was very difficult for me but you doesn't you don't seem like a guy who who needs any of that yeah it was pretty much like uh, you know whenever i have really wanted a thing and uh, i have i have worked for it mm -hmm. i have sort of ended up getting it which is good which is which is which is which is good so so let's That's, now first attempt yeah. not a whole lot of preparation you got mg mat books for that or not uh first attempt uh, no i had the og i had some uh, so, uh, what do you call i had some online i had the online material for mg uh, mg mat uh, the english uh, the the sentence correction thing okay but not not the whole whole material uh, just the for that. Right, okay yeah, yeah i just had the og the, the first attempt if i can remember correctly mm -hmm. i had the og yeah i i i studied mostly from the og yeah Okay, and you were still doing this around six ninety seven hundred in mocks at that time as well. Why? Yes, yes, yes. So six ninety six eighty. I had touched in the the GMAT prep mock. Mm -hmm. I towards the end I got a six eighty six ninety. Okay, and and then you went and took the exam. So how different was the exam from the mocks that you were, or how different did it feel? Okay, for me, <laughs> very different. People said, people said that there would there would be like you know you'll have a plus or minus fifty in the score and and stuff like that. Actually, uh, you know what? I knew my English English was the English was my weaker section, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew I hadn't studied too much for the first attempt. Mm -hmm. When I started, my math really didn't go that well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I knew I I was hitting a fifty, forty nine, forty eight, fifty, you know, in my math. But uh, when I when I was giving the exam itself, I know that I knew that it's not going that well. Mm -hmm. So from there, and I knew English is my weak point, you know. So even uh, even before I started the English exam, I had sort of lost hope. Okay, so mentally, okay, if quant was going to be my savior, and quant hasn't gone as great. Yeah, yeah, I pretty much I I pretty much lost hope and. Uh, I if you see I sent my score report I have a 19 in my first uh, in my first this thing yeah first attempt first my yeah my first verbal score is 19 uh, you know you generally wouldn't go that low when you're getting a 680 690 in the mocks yes. but yeah, but beyond the beyond the 15th 15th 16th question my english also i knew was not going well i i actually started uh, i lost interest in the exam i actually guessed a lot of questions and moved ahead and just finished the paper mm -hmm. and my palms were sweating which was which was uh, i i had a feeling i had never felt before wow i i've never felt so nervous mm -hmm. or i have never felt 
so out of out of situation and really uh, you know uh, so blank ever in my life okay okay wow, wow. I, i i i can actually imagine that um uh, i not in a competitive exam but, well you can say kind of competitive but but um, my first ever uh, job interview i sat in okay um, and it was one of those things where i really really wanted it and i okay. messed it up i think that's where the problem come when you really really want it i never really 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 wanted something that bad and when you want it you you i think it just builds up it, it, it definitely does and i i still remember there were those simple quant question 3d solids and i could solve them in my mind in the exam you know yeah. uh, <laughs> god what's going to happen um so, so funny thing so so this was uh, we were talking about 99 it was lucent it was the first company okay. on campus i wanted to get through and okay. um, and 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 uh, this happened couldn't get through the the aptitude test so the 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 third company came city of overseas i didn't want that okay and, and because i i bombed my aptitude test with lose and i said i'm just going to go for the heck of it because i want to do well in the aptitude test okay and, okay and then in the middle of it the same thing happened and then i told myself but i don't want this job so why worry about how the, how the test would happen let me just focus on the question and i aced it and 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 the funny story so uh, i went to the interview they said okay do you know programming i said sorry i don't know anything uh, okay. i i started learning c like 3 months back I said okay, okay. a very simple line of code i even messed that up this still okay. <laughs> and, and and that was end of story for campus placement for me and i was like so but but again bottom line is if you want something really bad you're going to mess it up and 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 then if 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 true if, if you start sweating and i think uh, i want to kind of uh, uh, if you don't mind share a part of your score report okay sure so so um uh, so so this is the the 19 score over here i can just zoom it in probably yeah and the quant was bombed up and 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 again impacted verbal right so right. let me just stop the share once again so we are back so so then what so when you went over you joined the chopras and and then you started preparing how long was that phase that was two months okay so i i think the first exam i gave was in uh, may may i think mhm the first yeah. exam 15th may yes yeah uh i think i skipped june july mm-hmm. and yes it was august september and then i think i gave it on october 18th october 18th yes yeah okay yeah. so so um, you gave the exam on 18th of october and 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 then uh, so how was this preparation phase what all did you prepare and so okay so you get a 19 and then there is a, you you know there's a lot to improve so it's it's a notion you feel you're at zero uh so all i did was that okay i need to i knew english was was the area of improvement i went uh, i went to chopras and i told them that you know this is this is how it is mm-hmm. and uh, they they gave me the they immediately got me enrolled into the course which i did without thinking mm-hmm. and uh, uh not really too many uh, good uh, you know uh, coaching centers or institutes for the gmat okay there might be tons and tons for the cat i don't know the quality but i think gmat requires a little more than that mm-hmm. uh, so uh, india bad situation because i have gone to a couple of two three of them i went to the manias and uh, i don't That's know if you then you by the way yeah prince i prince in review i went to chopras uh, a couple of two three other uh, you know sort of boutique uh, institutes but i felt i i i at that time felt that the chopras uh, the, two, the two teachers who were there i thought i'll probably manage with them then a couple of friends told me that the kaplan material is good okay so i think that combined i just i didn't have too much time because i wanted to apply that time in that year oh yeah october right yes yeah so uh, i did not really think or do so much so i just and i was and you know my Uh, i'm in a sales and marketing job and you always have a number pressure going on it's uh, i move around i move around in the city also so not only am i mentally stressed which is physically taxing as well mm-hmm. uh, probably i didn't put in too much effect uh, effort into the research i think which was really important mm-hmm. 
uh because you know your ability won't change so much capability will change so uh i i just went and joined them i started attending their classes they said two months you put in two hours in the morning and it will happen and i did that and i tried to really improve my english by uh, by just doing more and more of material not really uh, getting down to uh, what's happening and why things are wrong and why things are right yes yes and uh, you know i would go to the uh, the thing is that the, the teachers are not that well qualified there are times that you know when you ask them doubts you feel that you probably have a better take on this than them you know than them and uh, you but you realize that one one month into the course when you really can't do much mm-hmm. and you again the clock is ticking so uh, so yes i i just did that two hours thing in the morning try to do that every day mm-hmm. uh start give a lot of mocks again a bad decision towards tell me, the end tell me when you say a lot what how many are we talking about here i i think i gave about 15 mocks one five yeah wow wow okay i think yeah if not 15 at least 13 it's still a huge number yes 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 i i gave i gave all the uh, i so that with the kaplan series you get 10 tests okay which totally misjudge your uh, yeah I, mean, i was going to ask how representative I mean, oh, they haven't put in a lot of money into no, recently what i don't know what have whatever they've put in but you uh, on the first test you can do a million mistakes and you get a 690 oh wow that's the confidence booster i don't know what it is i don't know what it is but uh, the 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 kaplan the kaplan gmat tests are nowhere close to giving you a fair representation of where you are okay. and yeah i i i it, it, they were they are nowhere close because if they were close i should not have bombed the second time mm-hmm. uh, uh on the nine tests i had i had 700 pluses on five okay but but again so this time you did so the first time i think when you took the test there was no exam pack one the second time when you took the test the exam pack one was available right october uh, the the gmat prep you're talking about the other two additional tests ha ha so i did those again those are the last two i did no 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 but you also had the two additional ones available in october i didn't take talk. it i didn't take it in october okay i didn't take it in october i okay. thankfully i didn't take it in october okay there yeah, is i know they came somewhere around august of 2013 yeah 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 so oh, no, i didn't even know about it until when i actually went online and did a lot of research but anyway i didn't take that i did the last two gmat preps and i got about a 730 and 710 but but those were repeats so i think yeah do you could uh, i didn't really remember okay whatever yeah those were probably repeats and i also did two three tests from the manhad and gmat mhm and i was scoring a 640 uh, a 670 yeah 670 was my highest i think i gave three and again in that also i'm sure your verbal would have been under what 34 35 or ha huh, it was in the 34 35 and mm-hmm. uh, again i felt you know in the manhad and gmat great course material great uh, questions but you're not really going to get it in the paper and uh, somehow even on the manhad and gmat uh, you know you uh, end up doing you can make more mistakes and you get a you know you get a better score so, so, so one of the things with when- creating a good mock test is that you have to do a lot of simulations and uh, and, and yeah it's really it's really important about. it's really important for the test to serve one purpose is to make you know where you are hmm. uh, uh, because you know then you, that really changes everything it, it does it does and 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 and, and i think that's kind of where um, uh uh it's it's super i mean uh, we worked a lot on mocks and the reason we haven't released one is because we feel that we still need to work a bit more on it um okay. but but yes uh, manhattan gmat mocks i think in terms of other than gmat prep are probably the most accurate out there yeah 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 so they they, they are ex- i think the english is really good. english tests are good i i english tests are good mm-hmm. um a uh, close to fair you know uh, representation of where you are math uh math uh, because they're tougher sums i feel you can make more mistakes and still get a decent score so that's uh, 
but questions are good but again not a fair representation of where you are no yeah so again with with both of them um, so in my experience and I've had lots and lots of data points so um, so the mocks serve a really good purpose on the quant side if you are in the 42 to 48 zone okay then okay. a very fair representation the moment okay. you want to cross the 48 to 50 zone in manhattan the kind of skill set they test are very different from the kind of skill set that GMAT tests. Okay, I've never hit a 48 on the Manhattan GMAT, I think. Maybe not, I don't think so. I mean, maybe this prep I did once or twice. Hmm. But uh, I was, in that prep, I clearly remember, I think 45 was my highest on the Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 on the other hand, on the verbal side, um, Manhattan tests start to get a bit off if you are in the 35, 36 range. And and there uh, they start to get out of sync again. It's the kind of questions that GMAT asks versus this. I mean, we've had folks um, in our company who uh, who scored 37, 38 on Manhattan GMAT mocks and uh, and as practice, and have gone on to score 45 on the actual GMAT. Okay, wow. So so and, and it's not because the Manhattan mocks are different. It's just that the nature of questions that they ask, is, the nature is very different, and because. When we, we you talked about CAT, right? We hire a lot of people who actually are from a CAT background who are at that 9.97 level. I know that. 9.98 level in, in, in CAT. And and, and um, so they take the, the mock test and you they score a, a 37, 38 on verbal. And you look at where they made a mistake and say, okay, what's the nature of the question? And say, is this really truly representative of what was going to come on the GMAT? And at that point, it does start to, to, to kind of di differ because GMAT has changed in the last five years. True. So OG, the, a lot of those questions are still OG10, which uh, is actually when I took the exam. So, okay. uh, and thankfully GMAT has changed. Okay, okay, okay. So, but, but so, so, so you did the second attempt, uh, you pretty much focus on the Kaplan material. You, uh, 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 you, you, you. So again, you, again, I, there, I, I did a lot of practice on the English, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I was hitting a constant 34, 35, 36. Mm -hmm. uh, I hit 36 a couple of times, never more than 36. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought that, and my math was again a 50, 51, 49. So I was like, okay, you know, with this, I'll probably. So I didn't know, I, I didn't know uh, that after 34, 35, mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do to improve my English. Okay. Because clearly practice was not helping. Only practice was not helping. Mm -hmm. uh, moreover, like I said, I uh, I sort of you know put it in my mind that I I, I don't read books. Uh, I am comparatively slow at reading. Com you know when when compared to a lot of people, so okay. I felt that I can't really RC is gone. Okay. So you know you make that block in your head and you can do a lot of practice, but really didn't help. But still, I thought that you know. Maybe getting a 36 and if I ace it in the math, I'll do it this time. Yeah, 36 and 49 gets you a 700, yes. Yeah, so, so I, thought I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I thought I'll ace it and and yes, I went into the test the second time and I absolutely don't know what happened. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I you know, just... You quant if I remember, right? I think I got a 47. Yes. But there also I knew that I've not done it up to my potential because you know when you're hitting a 50 or a 49 and you know when it's not at that level. Yep, yep, yep. You you just know it. So I knew that again I'm not, I, I knew I'm not at a 59, uh, 50 and 49 level. And uh, I, uh, I I knew that okay, I've done okay. But then I this time I did not, at least I did not decide to just get up from just skip questions in English and move forward. I still thought that, okay, I'll, I'll still be close. Hopefully maybe a 36 can become a 38 on that day. And okay. uh, that's good. That's good to be optimistic, right? That yeah. kind of put, allows you to put in. Yeah. But uh, so this time I felt, uh, you know, you're always under certain amount of pressure, you know, uh, which I swear to God, I have never felt before. Mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of things, I've really not felt that. But no matter how prepared you are, uh, you are everybody is in, in in some sort of pressure for the G man because I think everybody really wants to get there. I think this is that stage in life when someone really really wants to go. Uh, I think this is so. What really happens to the G man? It's a transition that you want. It's yeah. 
prior to this whatever you were studying you you had those parents and you have to really kind of you know do things for them but this True. is kind of the only time when they say okay you're well settled do whatever you're doing and say no i exactly. want to actually exactly it's exactly it's all in your hands and and uh, yeah and you make a big mountain out of it Mm-hmm. and yeah and i went into the paper and and some of this time you know the funny part was so i came to one conclusion that i can't make an excuse mm-hmm. uh, saying that i'm under pressure and i can't do it for two reasons mm-hmm. one i had never been like that before and and uh, second reason is that everybody is going to be in that sort of pressure mm-hmm. so you know that's not an excuse if 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 uh, it, you know if if i say that my capability without pressure is 50 and uh, and and my capability with pressure is what 44 then that is my capability because everybody is going to be under that pressure a little bit of pressure so i think it's important to really tackle the pressure that's true uh, and yeah yeah so i i sort of went into the exam but and i i i went on with the questions i did my normal the way i did my mock, do i do my mocks Uh, I didn't really care about whether I'm doing it right or not right, and you know, in math, you know whether you're right or not right. Yep, yep. In English, somehow I never knew that mm-hmm. until EG math happened and mm. that that stage came in. But uh, I never knew that whether this is right or not right, and I just moved on. And I thought that oh god, uh, after I finished the English section, I was like oh god, I'm gonna click on okay, and please, please get me at least a six eighty, six ninety, and then let me be done with it. Yeah, please. I I, I, I have a good profile. I think six fifty six ninety is going to be enough. Something like that. Something like that. Mm-hmm. And I and I clicked the button, and there was there there was a six thirty flashing. And this time I was clueless and demotivated and and really lost because I didn't know what went wrong. So 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 at this stage, second attempt, fifteen mocks plus probably four or five in the first attempt. So twenty mocks and. probably about 4 to 500 hours put in already you studying 2 hours every day in the morning plus the mocks on the weekend so yeah. how are you still uh, you know attempting sentence correction or critical reasoning what is your your approach towards it at that point in time uh okay so for for sentence correction i read manhattan gmat okay i read it two times and you know when you read it you feel that wow you know everything but there is just such a plethora of rules that i really don't think you can apply it in the exam okay and i thought the solution to that is read it again but and you go read it again and then you feel that okay i remember everything mm-hmm. but still in when you have to answer questions in a span of uh, you know those 30 seconds to 1 1 and a half minute mm-hmm. what we get it is just not you will just it will all not strike to you an entire book of 300 pages one rule is just not going to strike to you it's, it's so that was the wrong way of learning uh, but but uh, they also joined chopras right so they didn't so that, that was somehow they didn't do anything okay okay yeah so i mean i i don't think maybe they could have helped a student who is getting a 540 515 is mocks to come to a 630 mm-hmm. i don't know but at least uh, whatever i felt that i'm capable of i felt there was no value added on okay okay all right so so this was october so yeah. um, and so for you were again dormant for 6 months you said okay this year is gone is that how it happened or did you go to gmat club right away no 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 then i sort of uh, so then you make it a big thing and my parents were like relax it's okay you know they've been really supportive and everybody was like it's okay just do your thing you're doing great professionally mm-hmm. and you know take it because they also did they were also shocked that i'm not you know uh, performing but obviously you know they won't tell you that yep they won't so they, yeah they won't tell you that because uh, it's not really happened so many times that i have not performed so uh, they they were like leave it's okay just go just move on with your life for a while at least we'll we'll see what we have to do you can study for symbiosis you can study for the cat and you know all sort of thing they were first like just let's relax and i and i really taken a toll on me because uh i have never felt that way it's so i'm a student who got who got a 78% on his 10th when he when he really started studying in feb mhm okay and my my mom thought that if i sit in hyderabad and if i'm going to be there with my friends i'm not i'm going to do, you know do my uh, 12th also so she said go to boarding school and 
and and maybe you know apart from she never wanted we stayed in pune earlier so she was never okay with the concept of narayana chaitanya sort of studying okay and she really didn't want she never thought that i am going to be an engineer first of all she thought that i'm not meant to be an engineer mm mm-hmm. so uh she said you know go there you'll have an all round development and if you still right, want, if you're still in sales and marketing you're not an engineer yes so i know i never i never wanted to uh, i wanted to do engineering but uh, i had a uh, i always wanted to do engineering but from a purpose that you know it will widen my horizon uh, so my dad's my dad's heading an fmcg company back in india mm-hmm. and i don't i didn't want to get into fmcg fmcg at all okay right and uh, or at least i was i i i didn't really f- uh, fancy it uh, and so i thought that when i do engineering uh, i'll have a technical background uh, i i i my, my reasons for doing engineering i'm sorry sort of digressing my reasons for doing engineering were that i have i'll have a technical background i'll widen my ho- ho- horizon with the companies i can approach Mm-hmm. and uh, and i thought that engineer engineering has a tougher uh, course work as compared to a bcom and all mm-hmm. and, and so i thought a tougher course work will still make me make me be you know it will keep me on the toes because if i had a bcom i'd just not study yeah i think if you need tough course work go in medicine i think that's the place to go and uh, that is that is if you have to sacrifice your life go to medicine <laughs> So uh, yeah, so those were the reasons, and Manipal clicked, and Manipal had a good brand name, and I was I got I did electronics and communication. Okay. So which means that I I must have done those the the the, the test well. Yes, those uh, ENC and computer science are the, the top two, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, and and what she said is that <coughs> so she said you go do uh, uh, Bishop School Pune, and if you're really meant to be an engineer, and if you if you go get through, uh, you go. I had an admit from Saint Stephen's for maths honors. Oh wow! Okay. I did. I I didn't do that because I, eventually I said I wanted to be an engineer, and hmm. now I'm going to do that. And I went to Pune and I did my twelfth, but uh, uh, I'm going to be an engineer. That's it. I'm not going to go to Saint Stephen's. Okay. Okay. So so then uh, you went there third attempt and and then so so this time so this time you know for the first six months I left it because uh, I was just clueless on what to do. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to improve, what to improve. I am you know when you reach such a big question mark, it's a big problem. So uh, then I as as Jan came, I started going on to GMAT club to see if people give it a third attempt or not. First mm-hmm. of all. and there and i saw a lot of success stories mm-hmm. and uh, and i was like okay i decided that i'm going to give it again one last time mm-hmm. and then i was like i need to do something differently i didn't know what that differently is i just said that something has to be different so i'm going to do it again mm-hmm. i started off when i started studying i started off with math mm-hmm. uh i got this book on critical reasoning called uh, I saw it online. People were recommending that book. Uh, Even Power Score. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. I ordered that book on Amazon, uh, and I read that. I thought that was the different thing. Mm-hmm. I'll do this time. And I actually spent a month without uh, before joining EGMAT. So I was a month into studying mm-hmm. uh, before before joining EGMAT, uh, and I and I read the Power Score. and i felt that i already know all this why this is not going to do anything to me okay and you know you so then luckily luckily you know it i literally felt god wanted me to score the third time and i and i saw eg mat on gmat club okay and how did that happen okay i don't clearly remember i was going through couple of links maybe couple of uh, Uh, you know the test series. Maybe I was trying to look at what do I, uh, what course do I opt for because I, I had exhausted Kaplan material. I had exhausted the the Princeton material. Uh, Princeton material. Yes, I had that material from a friend. Uh, so uh, I had exhausted all of that. So I think in in the search, uh, you know, of what to study, where mm-hmm. to study from, I sort of uh, bumped into uh, the EG math thing, and there was a webinar which was the free webinar which you have. Mm-hmm. that's that's what uh, you know caught on to me and and i went for the first webinar okay and yes that that did it that sort of uh, so then i think pile took that webinar okay must must have been a sentence correction one then 
I think it was a sentence correction one. Mm -hmm. And I was most clueless on sentence correction because you just don't know what what's the right answer. And for me, it's sentence correction uh, was no actually everything was tough, but sentence correction was more confusing after after finishing uh, you know after yeah, after finishing Manhattan when you're still uh, not doing sentence correction well, it makes you question yourself what's happening. That's true. Yeah. So uh, yes, then then I saw the webinar and and I think you know. She she did only three questions, but it was not about the number of questions. I think she did four. She does four usually. Unless okay, okay. three or four, four maybe. Yeah. So uh, she did only four questions, and uh, I got three on four right. Okay. Okay. I don't, but I have absolutely no clue why I got them right. Okay. Okay. Now two things. What really really struck me out was that uh, number one the approach hmm. and that you get to see when she's solving the question that's true so number one the approach very different from whatever you can read from a book okay uh, in india people don't even have that i don't don't think they have the they have the ability to really no one no one dissects it so much if i may say so no one so, actually spends the time to be very true yes 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 hmm. and and i don't even think no one knows their stuff so well you go and ask a chopra teacher why is this this way and not this way she will not have an answer she'll give you some lame answer mm -hmm. again because they don't spend the time yeah so they, they don't know their fundamentals also that well mm -hmm. and uh, the so yeah and i think one was the approach and two was the part where she she showed why each sentence is wrong, mm -hmm. right? And also, I got the right sentence. I I got the answers correctly, and uh, but I had marked it answer correctly for all the wrong reasons. Okay. So that's when I felt that maybe this is what's happening because clearly I have not ticked any of the answers for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a zero on four. It does. And, it does. Yeah. 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 And uh, and then the approach that Pyle had to solving the question, I don't remember so clearly, but whatever approach she had uh, was somehow it just struck me, and and I felt that okay, uh, you know, this is uh, this is this is a course which can really you know make me realize why I am not performing, and and. Because I went to everybody and said, "Why is it not happening?" And nobody had an answer. Mm -hmm. So I and you know because because she answers, you answer every EG might answer every why. We try to yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Every why is answered, or at least you try to answer every why till the other person is satisfied. Mm -hmm. And and I'm a person who asks a lot of whys, many a times unnecessary, but I do ask a lot of whys. And she, her, her, her way of te teaching was answering a why to every probable, pro you know, probable doubt that a student can have. And she's, and the basics are right, and and the way she approached it was different. So you know, uh, I thought that you know, let's let's try this course, mm -hmm. and and you know, maybe this will uh, this will take care of my English. And I felt the math was, uh, you know, sort of uh, already taken care of. So I will study math again mm -hmm. and try to improve my scores on math. Uh, and yes, I, I, I think you had you had an offer, and I just uh, mm -hmm. a, a discount offer going on mm -hmm. before a certain period. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I think that batch had already started. And okay. uh, so I start with SC one generally, yes. So. Yeah, yeah. Probably join the beginning, yes. Yeah, so uh, I I just went. I read a couple of that day. So th by that time, I I, had, I was well adept with Gmail Club. Uh, okay. By that time, yeah. So I I I did. Uh, I read a couple of reviews online and and stuff like that. I had I knew nobody who had done uh, uh, EGMAT. So, but I think the online uh, online were uh, you know was uh, online reviews were really nice mm -hmm. and. I went down to the side and I, I saw class people are teaching over here. It's mm -hmm. not just any graduate. 
and uh, two i think more than anything you know i had reached a stage where i'm not going to i i didn't think that asking other people how uh, this courses or that courses would have really helped me because i you know been there done that so uh, somehow i just i just felt that this is this this might be if i'm i'm destined to get a good score this might be this, you know this might really help my english up, go, go up mm-hmm. so then you started for four months after that ha so no then i then i sort of uh, so th- that was a you know uh, uh, tough period for me in uh, in wipro also in terms of uh, i mean tough in the sense i had a lot of work going on i had got a promotion mm-hmm. more responsibility uh, i i had john i had jobs in philips by that time okay yeah that's basically i was going to ask it like it's see oh yeah philips today yes yes it's been a year since i've been with philips and uh, philips is the market leader and uh, i uh, so Uh, you know i am an assistant manager so in a team of 3 to, to the regions number i contribute more than half so okay. i had big, i had big numbers on me and uh, uh, i mean there was there was a lot more work i was also traveling extensively uh, at that time because i was i was taking care of a couple of up country cities as well mm-hmm. so uh, um, i didn't uh, and and i felt that i'm in i'm in april so i thought that you know if i give it some time by august is august would be okay okay so uh, i i i i didn't really finish everything in the in the may batch as you had planned but uh, i i didn't spend too much time but what i sort of focused on was trying to be regular okay and how did you do that maybe half an hour 45 minutes at least no so at what time of the day uh i would actually come back from work and uh, take a nap for i'm not a morning person and uh, i i i've tried hundreds of times to uh, get up in the morning and do stuff but uh, mm-hmm. so even on say, even 10 days before the gym when i go, got up in the morning and did a test i got a 580 and i was like whoa what's happening okay uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway i just i just decided that uh, okay this is the, this is because i got up in the morning so i used to come back from work i used to sleep for an hour because i used to be really exhausted and then i used to probably study f- uh, from about 11 in the night till whenever i can sort of stay up mm-hmm. so uh, there were days that it was 45 minutes there were days were where it was half an hour and there were days where it was 2 hours also i just want to kind of pause you there but uh, yeah It's very important. I think this is something that a lot of people don't realize that um, they can't change themselves right away. If they're not a morning person. You can't study. I th- I'm, I'm I'm a morning person. Okay. And, and Pail is not a morning person. Pail okay. is a night person. So she actually, when she gets on going in the night, she will work till four in the morning or study yeah, till four in the morning if she has to. True. Right. True. On True. the other hand, for me. uh for me to be able to study till or work till 2 in the morning i need to sleep from 9 to 10 in the night and then okay. i can, and that to max till 2 and then i can again okay. get up at 6 and start studying but but again it's very important okay. to know that because somehow i don't know what the case is but but it's very difficult to to to, to get the neurons in your brain fired up for an extended period of time if you're not that kind of a person True, 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 true. So I've always been a night, uh, a night, you know, uh, studying in the night. But I think with GMAT, it's just not about going and reading the material. Yeah, so that's why this, yeah. So uh, you know, uh, that's why I would sleep for an hour so that I feel that I'm at least mentally I feel that I'm fresh. Hmm. So okay. I would sleep for an hour and study in the night. So that's how you kept yourself regular, studying in the night. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, and the best part is that the, you get a great study plan. okay so there and you know the study plan each each session is maybe it could range from 15 minutes also to to max about 35 minutes yeah 30, 35 minutes where we cut it off exactly so you know that way uh, that way you can you can even study for 35 minutes and feel that you've done something you feel you you at least gone one you know to the you, next you, you to the can next take mark on that excel cell exactly exactly, exactly 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 so you know that that really helped me uh, i think So I, I, if I could just, I've sort of written something, okay. Mm-hmm. If I could just sum it up and then I'll detail what happened in EG Mat, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, no score. Mm-hmm. I, 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 no score was a, you know, I had no score and I thought this was because I, I, I can't control my nerve in the exam. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I thought that's the reason. i could not uh, this i realized later i cannot so like i said everybody has pressure but mm-hmm. i was not being able to control my nerve because i'm not confident enough in english 
-hmm. Right? Everybody, uh, so in math, I would never feel that, I would feel that no, but I would come back. Because you, when you know you're ticking, you know you're ticking the right answer. Yep, yep, yep. But you know in English that's not going to happen. Uh, at least earlier for me. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I I came down to you know uh, you know I had to come down to why no why why the confidence not uh, is not there and why the, why I'm unable to control my nerve is because my basics in English were not good my approach was not correct mm -hmm. uh, I had absolutely no structure to what I'm studying and I had I had no answer to a lot of whys which no book can answer mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know there there I saw that English is the main reason and English uh, it, it's because the you know you, we are non-native speakers and uh, you know and that's why you don't have that sort of a base at least to crack the exam. That's true, right? And uh, that brings me to you know something I I realized with you. You seen three idiots? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So he 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 says something which uh, now I've started valuing a lot. Uh, you can have a goal, but you know you don't have to. You can't just chase success. You need to chase excellence. And that will lead you. You can have a goal, and then you chase success. You chase excellence, and you'll reach there. But if you just have a seven ten, and you say, "How am I going to reach there?" It's like a bull hitting the wall. That's true. Okay, that's, that's a very well said thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think this is what Easy Math did for me. It helped me excel. You know, it's it's very interesting that you say that. About eight days ago, I interviewed a guy. His name is Hari. I don't know if you saw his interview. Mm -hmm. No. So he's so maybe because you actually were done with the team at the radio. So he's yeah, yeah. thirty. Uh, okay. So similar score to yours on 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 verbally. I think he has a thirty eight thirty nine on verbal also. And and this guy is a researcher by hobby. Okay. He's a CA. Uh, so so chartered accountancy. But that's only to make money. But he does research otherwise, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to do a PhD in management. And and he made a, a statement that actually is kind of in. In very different words, saying the same thing that you 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 really saying. He says, um, if you want to be really good at something, practice it till you cannot get it wrong. Okay. Right? And, and to do okay. that, you figure out those reasons. And, and and I was like, wow. We try doing that. We never realize that. But that's what we try doing that. So when True. we do research internally, so we do about seventy percent of our time in R and D. Say, okay, why is this the right answer? And and you know, looking at all the principles that we did. Coming back to this and say, does it gel with what we did, or do we have to go back and modify? It? And I think that's kind of what we do. You say, how can you really get to a point where you can't get it wrong and follow the process and can't get it wrong? True. And, and I think he kind of summarized it for me. He's like, wow, this is great. And, and, and I True. think. True. So you know, with with the kind of uh, guarantee and with the kind of uh, you know, you you sort of build a dream for us that you know we can be there. Okay. And. Uh, and 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 then you you know it's all about excellence. It's about mastering what mastering sentence correction, mastering CR, and mastering RC. It's it's not about you know do these questions. It's not about uh, it's not about maybe you can get some questions wrong here. Skip it. It's not a tactic to reach seven hundred. It's not a tactic to reach. It's first about it's first about building base. It's first about really excelling in that subject, hmm. and then. Whatever fine tuning tactic, etc. In the end, and I think that is what uh, you know, sort of uh, got 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 the concept. You know, got my concepts right and gave me that confidence. When I'm picking an answer, I knew yes, this is correct. It's, that's that that and that I think is very essential. That is very 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 essential to to really keep your nerve. To I mean that is what that's that's what's most important, and I I swear to God you know I'm I I'm saying this you know chase excellence not success, but uh, today I with GMAT I value it. It's very true, and and, yeah, and frankly I, I also want to thank you, not for saying this but I think it's very important that uh, you know we do well we're doing well, but at every point in your life to get to the next stage you've got to be constantly reminded of this. And, and hearing Hari say this, hearing you say this, it kind of really tells us, okay, what is it that we need to do next? And then I think uh, we're very thankful for that. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. I just look back at my career. I mean, I could have, uh, luckily for me, luckily for me, I always knew that I wanted to sort of be in uh, sales and marketing sort of excited me because my dad's been there in the corporate world and I've seen his friends do it. 
uh, and uh, you know I, I out of engineering college you don't get sales jobs you don't get sales and marketing jobs uh, but I had done a couple of internships earlier which were related to market research and a business development and stuff mm -hmm. and I wanted to get into uh, you know some sort of a client interfacing role which I feel I would I would do well at because I'm sort of uh, I feel sort of naturally also you know better at that mm -hmm. some people are good coders I I can convince well whatever so uh, uh, and that happened for me you know luckily I, I went into Wipro I worked with Wipro lighting and uh, in that entire batch of 12 to 15 people I was the only one who was put into sales only the other marketing only the NBA gadgets were put into sales mm -hmm. but along with them I got an opportunity to be in sales and that's probably the reason I've done so. Uh, I've done well, uh, fairly decent uh, professionally, mm -hmm. because I was do some. I was doing something where my passion lies, and because where I was doing something where uh, I'm naturally also good at. That's that's true. I, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Uh, and it, it's again about excelling. Your aim is to just make money, but a little work. bit more to very so because I love doing this. It doesn't seem like work. Let me just do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so then, what's what's next for you now? So I think you, uh, you. So one last question before we go towards what's next for you. So you went in, you, you, you actually took the GMAT, you did fairly well, you scored seven ten, you know, it's a tremendous improvement over the five forty. True, uh, I actually, you know, I uh, five thirty. Sorry, I, I don't have a, I don't have the patience to give the exam again. Okay. And maybe now I don't feel the need to either, mm -hmm. but uh, I actually want to give it again because I felt I could do. I could. I, I think scoring a seven forty is not that tough. It it isn't. So so I think you are right now um, in that zone where where uh, uh, so success breeds success, success breeds confidence, True. and True. once you know you you're kind of there in the zone, uh, you feel True. like doing it again. And and I can tell you, having been there, I've taken the sure. GMAT twice, and, uh, and 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 so uh, the first time I had a seven hundred, and, okay. and 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 you know it's like I'm now kind of in the zone, and seven hundred isn't good enough for me, and 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 then I went and took it again, and and, and even though again everyone said why you can get an admit with seven hundred, I mean I had an IIT background. Uh, and and I was working in Germany and I had great records wow. and as okay. I pretty much built the first three G cell phone prototypes. Okay, wow. So wow. so 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 uh, again, um, but then it's like no, it's it's not good enough. I didn't have a perfect score in quant. That was very bugging me. It's like okay. how did I not have a perfect score in quant? So uh, so 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 yeah. But but the thing really was, had I gotten a six fifty at that time. I, I probably would have been scared and I said, okay, what if I get lower? To I had actually, I, I uh, you know, uh, this entire thing, this GMAT experience was not just about GMAT for me. It started taking a toll everywhere because I had really not seen myself being uh, so demotivated and uh, uh, not confident. I, I was not confident for many things, many other things because I, you know, because when you cannot figure out why you, if you can do in this, you can do in something else also. Yep. So uh, it was, uh, I think this the third time giving GMAT for me was, was more about proving it to myself than really getting that score and getting into B school. I, I think it's that both of them are very important actually getting. Yeah, a yeah I know, no, 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 that was, that was always there. But I think uh, this time I had to sort of prove it to myself that mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's possible. Why is it not happening? You need to sort of do that because it was affecting a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, you know, that way EG might really help me in, in getting that confidence back. And, you know, even in this time, this time also I, I, I've been sort of unlucky in, in, in this way. My first math question, math question in 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 GMAT has always been a bummer for me. Okay, I just don't know why it happens, uh, but somehow it throws me off. Okay, my game and I you you finish analytical, you finish your what 